Hello, everybody. Hold on, let me put this around. Hey, everybody. My name is Brittany, and my blog is The Almost Indian Wife. You guys can find it at almostindianwife.com. Um, so I am just continuing with the Periscope with Purpose Challenge. Uh, it's been so much fun, and I really enjoyed myself. I'm really surprised. I've actually done every single day. Oh, hello. Um, yeah, I kind of thought that I would have some days that I'd miss because of my kiddos, but I don't know. We're doing it, and we're having fun, and I'm loving it. So today's um, prompt, let me just readjust. Uh, today's prompt is actually three tips. So I was kind of just thinking this morning and trying to figure out what I wanted to do, and I decided on doing three tips for a killer intercultural relationship. Um, if you have not checked out my blog, that's actually what I blog about. Um, my husband is East Indian and my blog is all about just kind of how we've blended cultures and what we've done to make it work and what hasn't worked for us and um, yeah, it's just kind of like our story and our journey. So first of all, I've had some questions about why I shared your husband's scope yesterday. Yes, he was so excited. He came up to me this morning. He's like, look what I saw. He was very excited. So thank you for doing that. Um, yeah, I finally got him on the, the Periscope bandwagon. I was like, just do it. It's so much fun. You'll love it. He had fun. Um, so yeah, so I've had some questions though on why I say intercultural versus interracial. Um, it is on purpose. It's not an accident. It is on purpose. Um, and that is because I think honestly, if you look at your relationship, every single one of you guys are in an intercultural relationship. So let's look at culture. Culture itself is defined as a set of beliefs and ways of doing things. So you look at all of our families and each of our families has a distinct culture. And that can be family traditions, that can be ways that you guys talk to each other. Um, if you're the oldest sibling, if you're the youngest sibling, how many you know kids are in your family, all of that truly goes into defining your culture. So before we get started, if you guys know anybody that could truly benefit from some tips on having an intercultural relationship, please swipe right and share today's Periscope. So tip number one is communication. Um, communication is huge in any relationship, especially intercultural relationships. My husband and I have had so many times where, say, I start doing something and I think that, thank you for sharing, um, you know, we start doing something or I start doing something thinking, hey, it's second nature. This is just how I grew up doing it. This is what I'm used to, only to find out that it is just not working. Um, for instance, uh, my husband and I, before we got married, uh, when we were dating and engaged, we had kind of a more of a, an American dating relationship, and that was because his family lived so far from us. So we had our you know times to go visit and to go get to know his family. So my husband listed off some things. Here are some tips for my family. Here are some things about Indian culture. Indian culture, you eat food with your hands, do not use your left hand, etc. cetera. List off all sorts of tips. So I listened to those, and I took note on those. Then I go, I meet his mother, and I forget why, but like one of the second times that I was there, we were getting ready for some party and I'm cleaning up and I'm trying to help out. Hello. Thank you so much for joining. And I want to just obviously have a, just give a killer impression to his mom. I want his mom to love me and have just, just love me. I want her just to love me. So I go and I say, Hey, Helen, what can I do for you? What would you like me to clean? How can I help you? Oh, good to see you again too. Um, and apparently, I, so again, in my mind, I'm thinking, hey, I'm giving a great first impression. I'm being helpful. I'm offering myself up to her services. Oh no, in Indian culture, you are never allowed to call somebody older than you by their first name. So that would have been amazing to know from my husband, but he didn't know. You know, he didn't quite think that, hey, I should tell her this because it was something that he was so used to. So communication is huge. And I would even say, make sure that you guys are constantly reevaluating. Oh yeah, it was horrible. And l luckily we joke about it now. Um, and it's just something so funny. And obviously I'm white, so she knew that we were gonna have those moments, but yes. So that could have been saved. I could have been saved from that humiliation <laughs> by some communication. Um, so yeah, just communication. You know, even if you guys talk and you make a plan, you are not done there. You guys need to constantly reevaluate because you guys could discuss something, make a plan, and it may not work. 
you know, a couple years or a couple months later. So constantly reevaluate. Uh, my husband and I, if you guys actually check out my blog today, almostindywife.com, I talk about a foreign language culture clash moment that I had. Um, you know, my husband's family, they all speak Telugu, and obviously I do not. <laughs> so I've had times where I go and I sit down and everyone starts talking in Telugu and I do not understand a word. So early, early on in our relationship, I told my husband, hey, so I know this may not be how it is, but I feel like you guys don't want me to take part in the conversation or be a part of the group when you guys do that. Um, and you know what? I've talked to many, many couples and people that have um, emailed me because of my blog that say, hey, I've had the same situation, but I never said anything. That happened with my mom when my dad's family spoke Spanish all the time. Yeah. And you definitely have to say that. Ooh, half Costa Rican. Awesome. Um, yeah. So, I mean, you have to say something because, you know, my husband didn't realize. I don't think sometimes that he realizes when other people are speaking in Telugu because it's so it's just so natural to him. Um, but yeah, other people have told me, hey, I have the same problem, but I didn't say anything. You know, I don't want to hurt their feelings. I don't want to say anything. No, you need to say something. You know, obviously, I would never expect somebody to not speak in a foreign language, but my husband and I made a decision together, a very conscious decision that he would interpret for me. You know, and along the way, along the last six years, we've had to reevaluate that conversation to say, hey, I not only want you to interpret for me, I want to learn because I want to be able to take part, not just know what's going on. So you need to constantly reevaluate. Is it working? Is the plan to interpret working? Is somebody forgetting to interpret? What's going on? So just constantly reevaluate, constantly keep those lines of communication open. Even if you don't want to hurt somebody's feelings, talk to your spouse. That's what they're there for. Make sure that he or she knows how you guys are feeling what's going on, what's inside your head. Because if you don't, if you bottle those feelings up, you will start to be bitter and you'll get resentment towards that person. Obviously, we don't want that. We don't want that at all. So my husband and I even went as far as to, on our date nights once a month, um, we're not always the best at this, but we try very hard. Once a month, we actually purposely just have a talk night. And during that time, we got to dinner, we enjoy ourselves, and we just ask each other questions. Hey, how are you feeling about your relationship with my family? Is there room to improve? Is there something I can do to help? what's going on? Or, hey, are we having enough fun? Are we taking time enough aside from the kids and talking? Do you feel loved? Do you feel respected? And we really, once a month, have the time to just ask all those questions. Because um, again, sometimes you're like, ooh, it's just not the right moment to say it. But make time. Make the moment happen. Talk. Communicate. It is huge for your relationship. Um, so number two is have grace for each other. You know, I cannot tell you how many times uh, my husband and I have figured out how to blend cultures by screwing it up. Um, if you're just joining, we're talking about three tips for a killer intercultural relationship. Um, and these apply to every relationship out there. Um, so number one was communication. Constantly keep those lines of communication open. Number two is have grace for each other. Like I said, that moment with my mother-in-law, if I would not have had grace for my husband, I could have been really ticked off. Hey, why did you not tell me that? That was embarrassing. <laughs> um, you know, so have grace. You know, a lot of times, especially when you're blending cultures, you don't know when something's going to come up. You don't know if something's going to become a problem. And sometimes you figure it out by going through it. We figured out things, I mean, gosh, every few months, like, hey, I didn't realize that this was a culture, you know, a part of your culture. I didn't realize this is a custom, or I didn't realize your family did this or that you do this. I'm not so sure I like that. But you have grace for each other and you talk, again, you go, it goes back to communication. Have grace for each other, talk about it, see what didn't work, and it's okay. You're gonna screw it up and that's how you learn. And that's okay. Nobody's gonna do it correctly all the time. You know, there's no guide to an intercultural relationship. It's just not there, you know? So it's okay. Have fun, experience it together, figure it out together, have grace for each other. Um, the third tip is remember why you're in this relationship. Remember why you're doing it. You love each other and that's okay. You know, my husband and I, there are still things that we cannot agree on because his culture says one thing, mine says another, and that's okay. We love each other and instead of getting caught up in those moments or caught up on those things we can't agree on, we just remember why we're in this relationship. And honestly, it helps that communication, helps you have grace for each other, helps you to get through those things. And it helps you to have fun along the way. You know, it's easy, like I said, it's easy to get caught up in things that are not blending correctly, that are not blending smoothly. And 
you love each other and that's all that matters. So if any of you guys have some good tips on, you know, how to make your intercultural relationship amazing, please share. I'd love to hear. You know, I've learned, I mean, I haven't been married for very long, six years. It feels like a long time, but we're still learning. And, you know, it's great to share the tips and the things that you guys learn because we're all out there on the same journey, on the same path, trying to figure all these things out. So share. And, you know, that is why I started the Almost Indian Wife blog is I realized there's not a place for people to go to get advice for these things. And, you know, people need to talk about it and to share what they've learned. I definitely think talking about it is key. My mom stayed quiet about it for a long time. Yeah, you know, that is honestly one of the things that I hear from my readers all the time is, here's my problem. Okay, what does your spouse or your partner say about that? Ooh, I haven't told them. You know, and you never know. A lot of times, maybe they feel the same way. You know, so make sure don't let bitterness and resentment come in because you're not willing to say something. So always just, again, keep those lines of communications open. Even if it's awkward, even if you feel uncomfortable talking about it, do it. You know, having grace is so important and giving people the benefit of the doubt. True. Um, you know, I've had moments with my husband, especially with, you know, Indian culture. It's very different from what I'm used to. Um, so I've had moments where I'm like, hey, why did you not say something? Um, that's been a big one for me is if something happens, if I feel offended by a family member in my family, you just, you say it, you duke it out and you figure it out right then and there. In my husband's family, it's not like that. Everything is just, it's different. You need to take somebody aside privately. And honestly, it's probably a way better way than my family does it. So for me in those moments, I'm like, Hey, why did you not say something? You know, as we're talking about it later, why didn't you talk to, you know, why didn't you stand up for me? What happened? For him, he's like, hey, um, I did. You know, afterwards, after done talking, I actually took so-and-so aside and said, hey, that's really not the best way to talk to Brittany. Or, you know, hey, that actually was offensive. You know, we should probably talk about how we can do this better next time. You know, for me, I just automatically assumed you didn't say anything because I didn't hear it. So, yes, benefit of the doubt. Um, and again, when you're blending cultures, it's brand new for everybody. You know, each family, each relationship is different. So that's okay and expect the challenges and expect to work through them together and give each other grace and benefit of the doubt. So that's huge. If you guys would like to hear any more tips, I share tons of tips um, and stories on my blog, almostanywife.com about blending cultures and um, intercultural relationships and family. So please be sure to check it out and uh, make sure you guys put in your email and subscribe so you guys don't miss a post. Thank you guys all so much for joining. I had a blast talking to you guys. All right, bye.